so we are going to move on to the next objective, <clears throat> which is to describe diffusion strategies. And so the, the exercise that you'll do within the dashboard is to choose three of the diffusion exercises that you are, that you already have experience with or that you are willing or you think that might be useful for you given your specific barriers um, and, and to describe those. So what I am going to do now is I'm going to go through the different um, diffusion exercises um, the two exercises from Flip the Script and the rest of the exercises are from A Liberated Mind. Okay. So the first, the first diffusion strategy, and in um, Coit's book, he doesn't describe them as diffusion strategies, um, in those terms, but once you once you read them that you you'll start to see the connection with how with how he is conceptualizing the negative noise and those negative thought patterns and his theory about strategies that are helpful based on his own personal experience and his own study and so the idea of the uh, new, no technology time morning group growth routine so um, what he's defined, or, and what he calls his, the 10 habits that are in his book, he calls them the yellow ball habits. And so there's a story in the book about his young son uh, and a swimming lesson and the, the swimming coach and the strategy that he used to help the kids overcome their fear of jumping in the water. And it was to take a yellow ball and throw it in the water which then, you know, the kids were focused on getting the yellow ball and not on the fear of swimming. And so um, the, the two yellow ball habits that we'll talk about today as in regard to diffusion strategies are the no technology time morning growth routine and the blessed faint. And so the morning growth routine, kind of his theory around this is that uh, it's very common in our society, in our culture today to, you know, the first thing that you do is open up an electronic. And whether that's, you know, you're getting on email, you're checking messages, you're on Facebook, you're on Instagram. And, um, you know, what that you're, you're essentially priming your brain with potentially negative input. And when you, you know, when you have that priming of negative input, it and if when our thoughts are fused, it can kind of um, trigger that you know that cycle, that negative cycle of of negative thoughts. And so his the habit that he teaches about is rather than making your the first thing that you do be something electronic which has could have a potentially negative impact on the thought patterns which will then you know carry over throughout the day is to replace that with a um with an inspirational reading and so he suggests waking up um you know earlier than normal so you know 15 to 30 minutes or so before you normally wake up um, reading something inspirational so you, you would have something chosen already that you're a book that you're reading out of or a book of motivational um passages um so you so the routine would be wake up read from there and then move on with your day and with the with the idea being by um beginning your day and kind of starting your you know starting your engine with positive words can have could potentially have a, a a positive effect on the rest of the thoughts that are or the thoughts that are more likely to happen um, throughout the day and so you now on a behavioral principle point um, we might call this priming or behavioral momentum and so you know he suggests starting out with just you know waking up early and reading and then throughout the book, there are other there are other strategies that he talks about, and ones that I have the things that I've implemented into my morning day, my morning routine 
which now is a little bit more complex, is to every morning I, I commit to reading something that I find inspirational, empowering, or interesting, uh, doing yoga, so um, and which is the asana is just stretching and getting and my uh, more guided breathing and uh, meditation and some personal reflective writing, which I call my mindful musings or my morning musings. And so, um, you know, and even, so I've set myself up to do that every single day habitually and have given, but have given myself the freedom and the flexibility to go from, uh, I can, you know, I could just spend five minutes on each task in the morning. So that morning routine could just, you know, it's 20 minutes of my morning. Or if I have a, you know, if it's a Sunday, for instance, I usually read for longer and do a longer you know, yoga session, longer meditation, and a longer period of writing. Um, but for me, it has been, you know, one of those critical things to establish that routine. And I've gotten to the point now where I wake up every morning looking forward to that you know, that precious time, those precious moments in the morning that I have to myself um, for my own kind of personal development and setting my intentions and setting the stage for the day. The second strategy is to create a blessed bank. And so, you know, we can, we tend to get caught up in these thoughts of scarcity and I don't have this and I don't have that and I need, you know, I need, I want, I must, I, you know, and it causes kind of a, a, this pattern of um, behavior. Um, and so, you know, his suggestion and strategy is to, is to every morning wake up and write three things that you're blessed to have in your life. And then as a fourth kind of thing to do on top of that is to think about one of the biggest challenges that you're facing in your life and identify what the gift is. So what is the, what is the gift? What is the potential benefit of that challenge? Even though it's hard, even though it might um, have a negative impact on you, what, what could, what, how could you um, conceptualize this as something that is positive? Um, one of the more advanced um, diffusion strategies that is suggested in the Liberated Mind book is social sharing. And um, but I put that, I put that on this list first because I want to, you know, I want, I will open it up if anybody is interested in sharing their experiences with diffusion exercises. Um, but social sharing can be, can be difficult, um, but it can also be helpful in the change, in the personal change process, uh, because as we're able to talk about what we're going through and how we're thinking and and the strategies that we're using and how they're working, um, the more easily and the more fluently we will be able to utilize those skills in the moment when they're needed. The next diffusion strategy is, um, is all about catching your automatic thoughts. And so it, um, as you become really good at, as you become really good at this and more practiced, you'll be able to utilize the skill in the moment, but the, the exercise that you can do for yourself to, um, to start to listen to what those thoughts are is to set aside a few minutes um, every day to simply be, you know, get present, be in the moment and listen and write every thought that comes into your mind just write it down in just kind of a free flow, free form, you know, thought happens, get it out on paper, thought happens, get it out on paper, and for and doing that for a few minutes. And with the goal being that you're, you know, you're learning to switch your attention and learning to listen and learning to translate those thoughts into a into thoughts that can be put down on paper. The next, the next strategy is one that's very, that is very well loved, especially in, even by myself, is called Leaves on a Stream. And so this is a mindful meditation uh, strategy where you um, sit or lie down somewhere where you're free from, there can be noise in the environment, but as long as you're free from distractions and you're not going to be pulled to something that necessitates your attention. 
Um, and so as you're sitting with your eyes closed and breathing deeply, you are um, allowing your thoughts to, you know, you imagine you're sitting on the bank of a river, watching leaves fall into the river and watching them float, you know, land on the water and float down. And as, and as thoughts come into your mind, you can label them. I'm having the thought that, they're, that the heater is really loud and taking that thought in, you know, imagining that you are placing it on a leaf putting it on the river and, and watching it float away. And so spending some time, a few minutes every day, you know, practicing that skill again, helps to build those behavioral pattern networks so that you're more readily able to utilize those, those strategies in the moment when you have those thoughts that, you know, that pull your attention away from the present. A kind of a fun and quick one to do is called disobey on purpose. Um, and so this, you know, sometimes when you have those negative thought patterns of, you know, I can't, I can't do this, I can't do that. Um, this strategy is really helpful if those thoughts are, are common for you. Um, and so you, what, it, what it entails is simply doing something while saying the words, um, that you can't do that. So for instance, you know, I can't pat my head with both hands. It is physically impossible to pat my head with both hands. Okay. And so the idea is that you are, you know, you're breaking the power of the language versus the actual feeling of what is happening because, and, and realizing that, you know, illustrating that point that words are just words, thoughts are just thoughts. They don't necessarily control what is happening. The next strategy is to give your mind a name, and I introduced this a little bit last week. My mind's name is Frank, and I thank him for his input regularly. Um, and really, um, you know, being able to listen, you know, give your give your mind a name, listen to it, as, and accept and um, hear the input is important. And, and also being able to differentiate um, and not, um, and to not always listen to, to those things. So it's, you know, I can hear those thoughts. I know, I, I hear what you're saying. I thank you for your input, Frank, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and act in accordance with my values anyway. But, you know, but thanks for, thanks for looking out for my best interest. We, we appreciate what our, what our minds have to say, um, but don't have to let them dictate and control our actions. One of my favorite ones is singing, singing your thoughts. This is something that we do in our house very often. Um, and so whenever, you know, whenever we are stressed out about something in my house, my husband and I will be commonly caught singing random songs and making up funny lyrics. Um, and it's just a fun way to, you know, learn how to, you know, take yourself, a, take yourself a little less seriously, take your thoughts a little less seriously and, kind of, you know, and, and have a little fun and it can kind of diffuse that negative cycle. Uh, backwards words is, um, is a good one, quick and easy, good way to illustrate the idea of what I would consider m more of a like response interruption and redirection strategy for diffusion, where you know you would write down a thought su su such as um, "I'm such a procrastinator," and then you would take the word "procrastinator" and write it out backwards. And um, you know, I, I had it I had it written down, but I don't now I don't have it in front of me. But procrastinator procrast procrastinator ba backwards is eat or retrust or create prop or whatever. <laughs> I, I can't remember the exact word, but it, the idea is to make it, to turn it around and break that, break the power of that word procrastinate um, over and the fusion that that has to other thoughts um, in your uh, relational networks. Um, another popular one in my house is the different voices. And so, you know, singing things in a funny way, saying things in a funny way, um, you know, acting things out 
um, is, you know, a really good way to get laughs in our household and you know, break that, you know, break that cycle of negativity. Um, words on your hand is a good one to really illustrate the, Im the impact that your thoughts can have on your ability to uh, perceive and attend to other things in your environment. So you don't have to physically do it, but imagine that you write, you know, you write a negative thought on your hand and you have it out in front of you and you can see it. Um, and then you bring it close up to your face and as though you're focusing, so you can see that the thought is there, you can't really see, um, you can't read it, but it is clouding your vision. It's clouding your perception. And then you bring your hand, you know, you bring your hand out and now, and it's right in front in your field of vision, or right in your line of sight. And so you can see the thought, you're focused on the thought, but you can still attend to some things that are going on around you and you can switch your attention, even though this is foremost in your mind. And then the third step is to kind of move your hand and that thought over to your side where it's in your periphery, it's there, but you've put it in a place where you know, when, I, when I'm ready to attend to you, I will attend to you, but, your, but the presence of that thought is not, um, it's not impacting your line of sight. And it's not impacting, it's, um, you know, it's a way to visualize how you can take that thought, put it in its place, and not allow it to affect your attention. Um, the next strategy is to carry it with you. This is sometimes this is good for those really deep, dark thoughts and negative thoughts that weigh on us heavily. Um, some, you know, we have this tendency to want to push it away and we don't want to have it. And that's a bad thought. And, you know, let's bury it six feet under. Um, but when we're not willing to have a thought, you're more like, you're more likely to have it. And so this strategy asks you to write down, write down that thought on a piece of, physically on a piece of paper, fold it up, put it in your pocket, put it in your purse, put it in a wallet, put it somewhere where it's with you. You're physically carrying it with you. And then throughout the day, you know, placing your hand on it or patting it, acknowledging that it's there, acknowledging that that thought is physically with you um, and still choosing to act in accordance with your values, even though it exists and it is part of your life. The last diffusion strategy is to take a negative thought that you have and imagine that you're standing next to a small child of five or six years old and imagine that that child said that thing about themselves. Okay, so like, oh my gosh, I'm so tired. I'm such a miserable, miserable person and, I, um, and I'm, no good at, um, I'm no good at my job. If, a, if you had a five or six year old child standing next to you who said something like that, the, the, the diffusion strategy and the diffusion exercise is to imagine and really imagine or write out or say and do what you would, what would you do for a child or to a child who was saying those things? How would you talk to them? Would you give them a big hug? Would you tell them that it's going to be okay? Would you say some reassuring things to them? And then take those things, take those ideas about how you would treat, how you would talk to that child and how, what you would do for that child and turn that around and figure, find, try to identify how you could do that for yourself. How can you literally or figuratively give yourself a big hug? How could you literally or figuratively um, you know, tell yourself that it's going to be okay? Um, and to, in order to diffuse from those strategies, or to diffuse from those thoughts. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, open it up for anyone to share. And I won't mute myself this time, but I will be quiet. So if anybody would like to share a, dis a diffusion strategy that they've tried or they like or their experience with it, um, you are welcome to do so now or ask any questions that you have about diffusion strategies. I really like the no tech idea and like looking at positive affirmations. I went to, I think it was Barnes and Noble or Books a Million or something, and they had a dot to dot 
positive affirmation book and one the dot to dots are not relaxing um especially if you're flying on a plane and you're using a pen and somebody hits your arm you know just you know that could have happened to me <laughs> but the messages throughout the book are what I really liked and what drew me to it so just little short phrases that maybe I've never heard of and as I'm looking through I'm like wow I really needed to hear that right now so maybe not so much the dot to dots but the affirmations are awesome <laughs> That's awesome. I could definitely get that about the dot to dot. That would cause me some distress, distressing thoughts <laughs> if I went off my dot to dots. Um, but yeah, absolutely positive. Those positive af affirmations, those positive statements. I have a, I have a strategy where if I, if I see a quote that I really like um, or that really strikes a chord with me, I have my, I'll hold it up. So this is my, this is my planner. I use a lion planner um, and then in the front I put you know, like these are coffee stickers and some quotes that I um, that I really like that struck a chord with me and so I'll just write them down so then if I have you know I have a moment and I'm feeling you know I'm like okay I need a little inspiration I can just turn to the front of my planner and um, you know read some of those things Anybody else have anything, that, any thoughts that they'd like to share? All right. Well, we will head back in to the presentation. So um, as I mentioned, the exercise for this objective is to actually write out three of the, a description of three of the diffusion strategies that are, um, that you connected to the most, that you've tried and that you really like, um, and that you're more likely to use. Because when we're able to describe diffusion strategies, what they look like and how they are utilized, it's more likely that you're going to use them in the moment um, because you have those, you know, really strong language um, constructs around those strategies. 